today we'll be checking out a NAS. This one's by Terramaster and it's got four hard drive bays and three PCIe NVMe slots. As we move to a mini PC, maybe we can repurpose our old hard drives and make them into something very useful. Is the Terramaster F4425 Plus any good? Let's find out. Welcome to Team Pandori. Subscribble. So this box here came directly from Terramaster. No cash was exchanged, and all they wanted for this was a non-biased video review. And on first impressions, this thing is very large and quite heavy. So here's the box, and here's the barcode. For those that like flaps, we've got a few here. And to add, this thing is very well packaged, so nothing's going to get banged up, even if you have a nutty postman. Hey yup, it's R2-D2. Pew, 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 pew. So in the box we get the NAS, a power cable, a network cable. Oh, this has some girth. Look at this. Top quality right here. A bag of screws, probably for the hard drives. Ah, the power supply. This one here uses a DC jack, and it's a switching adapter, outputting at 12 volts, 7.5 airbags, giving us a maximum of 90 watts. Nice weight to it too. As for these sheets of paper, we get a quick installation guide. A sheet claiming to be warranty. And it opens up like a map. There's a compensation promise. But best of all, stickers. So this is what came, and let's check out the specs. So at first glance, the N150 CPU sounds quite underpowered, but for a NAS rather than the gaming system, it's more than enough, especially since Intel's QuickSync helps with the video transcoding. It's got 16GB of DDR5, has four hard drive bays which can house either 3.5 inch or 2.5 inch SATA, and three NVMe slots, but it's a shame they only get a single PCI3 lane each. We have two ports of 5 gigabit Ethernet LAN, low noise levels, and as mentioned before, a 90 watt power supply. Yes, much more powerful than the standard N100 mini PC, since it has to handle up to four mechanical hard drives, but it'll only use as much power as it needs. It's currently a 20% off, going for $455 on the website, and this is matched on Amazon. If you'd like to help out our channel at no extra cost, check our affiliate links in the description down below. So let's check out the NAS. It's essentially a large aluminium block, nice and shiny, it also has a Terramaster logo on the side. The front is made of black plastic, and we have the four hard drive bays, and each of these can come out very easily. Also on the front we have a USB 3.2, and the power switch here. Under that, even though it's quite hard to see, we have some lights, showing drive bay activity, and if it's turned on or not. Swiveling to the back we have the BIOS reset, HDMI for video, two 5 gigabit Ethernet LAN ports, another pair of USB 3.2, and there's also another in USB-C form factor. In the corner, DC power in, and a grill where we can see the large fan that will cool down our drives. Moving to the bottom now, we have these four feet, all of which are a slightly squishy rubber, which may help with lowering noise levels. They're tall enough to allow the air holes to breathe, and we also have these four screws to get inside. Another way to get in there is by taking a look at the hard drive base. Just push in, and then pull out. Unfortunately, there's no locking mechanism, but this NAS is aimed to compete in the budget to mid-tier market. We can see screw holes for the 2.5 inch drives, and the other four are identical. And once they're out, we can see how they connect up. Nice fan. Getting to the PCI slots requires us to remove these four screws with a posi driver. Alley up. And now we can see the three PCIe 3B1 slots. This doesn't come with any storage, so we need to add our own. The phone protects the board from the case when we open it up, and down here is the removable memory. This is one stick of DDR5 laptop memory branded by Terramaster. But as there's no storage, I'm a bit confused where to start here. If we scan the QR code with our phone, it links us to a quick installation guide. It's full of videos, and it aims to simplify the process. That looks pretty straightforward. Just plop in our storage, and we should be good to go. We'll be using this 256GB PCI3 before, as it's just been lying around. We'll then put the case back together. Then we're going to use a 2TB Senna hard drive. Yes, it's built in 2012, but it's a perfect opportunity to show a use case scenario, one where you just want to reuse parts taken from past computers. If you want to use 3.5 inch drives, we just need to take off the sides here, pop in the drive, making sure the holes match up, 
and then push in the plastic sides. We don't need any screws for this, but we'd like to see a screwless solution for the two and a half inch drives too. And now we just slide it in. Now that was pretty easy. With two drives in and the network plugged up, it's go time. On the monitor, we can see what it's doing, and there's actually a small drive, possibly MMC, with the TOS 6 installation tool. Now the thing is, we don't need a monitor at all. We can just use our mobile phone or computer. We can freely download it from the market from either iPhone or Android, and if we're in the same network, it'll find it straight away. We'll be leaving all the settings at default to see what kind of experience a NAS noob like me will have. And to be honest, flicking through these screens, making a username and password, and logging in from this mobile phone is very easy. We have a clean interface, which is simple to navigate, and as TOS runs on Linux, resource use is very low. And thankfully, as are the temps. The SMB server is on at default, but we can turn on other file services if we wish. Even though a mobile can be handy, using a computer is a much better way to adjust settings. Just log in using an internet browser, and we're in. Now one issue with this automated install is that TOS raids up our drives even if we didn't want it to. And as these two drives are of different sizes, we're only left with one 256GB partition, wasting essentially 2TB of space. If you did want to use a JPOD config, it's best to add one drive at a time. So, here's the interface in the browser, and like before, it is very clean. We have a few applications already installed. Jellyfin, a video streaming app, and if we want to add more, we have the App Center. It's Linux, so we can use the terminal to add more things if we wish, but to keep simple, the App Center is the way to go. These things here are completely free to use, and if you want to install one, you just click that Install button. So these are recommended by Terramaster, but if you want to see their full list, click All. So we do have a nice collection here with antivirus, Jellyfin, and things like that. But when comparing TOS to Casa OS, which featured on our Zima Blade review, this here feels somewhat stale, very safe. It just seems very controlled, as there's only one app for each task, whether that's to keep things straightforward or to prevent users from getting into trouble. Safe. Some people will be happy with this, but you know, personally, I want more. After uploading some video files and a couple of more clicks in Jellyfin, we can create our very own Netflix. Yeah! Now there's a lot more we could do with this server, but with TOS, I felt a bit limited. So to get more app options and an easier time setting things up like JBOD, I switched over to Zima OS. It's built by the same team behind CAS OS, so it has that same clean and friendly vibe. Installation was quick and painless, and now we can do much more, like creating downloading blocking and basically turning this into our little hacker box. Yeah! Moving on now to the noise levels and power draw, at 20 centimeters away, it's fairly quiet. And it pulls around 16 to 22 watts, and this is with three NVMe drives, one mechanical, running a Jellyfin server. It's about time for the pros and the cons. The Terramaster F4425 Plus is very nice. Uh, sorry. The CPU stays cool, and that large fan does a great job of taking care of those mechanical drives. We can add seven hard drives or SSDs. It comes with five gigabit Ethernet LAN, and it's incredibly simple to get running. As for the cons, the software really wanted us to use RAID. It felt limited if we didn't want to use a terminal, and the lack of true PCI 3 before slot made us feel our NVMe sticks were being underused. Either way, we can still install our own software like Zima OS, and it's very unlikely that my network would ever be bottlenecked, even at PCI 3B1. All in all, this is quite nice, and we'd like to hear what you think in the comments down below. Here's a quick thank you to all others on our Patreon, and if you'd like to help us out monetarily, please consider joining. Also, whacking the like button, subscribing, and if you fancy a chinwag, we got Discord too. This has been Amy Chicken of Team Pandori, and I'll catch you on the next video. Ta-ra! Beverly can spin on me anytime.